Hello. So I have another new toy and uh, this one has got a little upgrade that's arrived in the post. So I've got my A500 Plus set up here with uh, the rock hard disk and memory upgrade. So th this thing has extra chip RAM and some fast RAM and a hard disk and I've even scored an appropriate monitor. <laughs> Ooh, which I can see coming in and out of phase with the video, so that's exciting. So it's currently got the original 68,000 CPU in here, and I have a 68010 to pop in. So we can see it's currently 711 dry stones, and the uh, chip speed, uh, which I believe is the RAM, is 1.02 and so because I've got the fast RAM uh, you can see it's actually 1.34 times faster than a A600 uh, already which isn't bad so let's pop the other CPU in and see what that does so here we have the mighty beating heart of uh, many of the Amigas the Motorola 68000 running at 7 megahertz now never taken one of these out so let's see how this goes This is quite well stuck in there. <laughs> okay, that went in quicker than I hoped. <laughs> well, well, let's uh, let's freed up one side. Well, I'm not sure I'm loving that particular angle. <laughs> really don't want to bend all these pins. One damn corner left with a capacitor in the way. Okay, well, just had to bend the capacitor a bit and uh, doesn't look like I've ruined that chip. Now here's a question. This thing's symmetrical, so how do you know which way round it should have been? <laughs> so it's got a little cutout. But of course what I didn't do was check which way round this chip was. So I may have to go and look at this video to check that out. And it is of course, the cutout goes at this capacitor end, which we all knew all along. Now this is not what you would call a zero insertion for CPU like a nice modern one, so let's see how easy this is to get in. Now the legs on this are not as straight as the legs on the original. It's got 
these two that need bending in a tiny bit. Uh, some of the others are a bit, a bit off as well. Still, hopefully, we're going to be able to get this thing to go in happily. Don't know how much wiggle room you have or need. The answer is fairly hard. If I can work it in a little bit at a time, I'd prefer that so I can keep an eye on all the legs. Yeah, well maybe this is in. Let's check the other end, see how much gap there is. I mean, there's a gap. There's a gap, but uh, you know, there was a gap before. Okay, well, let's hope that that's done. So the question is, do I now test it open? Well, I have an Amiga power supply up here. So, yeah, I might as well plug it into the TV. Um, check it posts, or, you know, gets to the floppy disk insertion screen. Um before I put everything back together. So I'll give that a quick go now and we'll see how we go. And if that's all successful, the next thing you'll see is me uh, trying out uh, boot from the hard disk. Okay, so the machine did indeed start up downstairs with uh, the new, s sorry, start up uh, upstairs in my living room with the uh, new CPU in there. So it should all work. So let's turn it on and see what we get. Very noisy hard disk. Okay, we've got some workbench. Give Sysinfo another try. Yeah, it's definitely picked it up as a 68010 on the text there. <laughs> so 759, I think it was a 711 before, wasn't it? My chip speed hasn't changed. I'm a speed versus a standard 68000 in an A600 is now 1.43. It's a smidge faster. I think it's uh, a good bit faster in thumb, some things and uh, not so much faster in others. But a very cheap little upgrade to play around with and uh, all looks successful. I believe this should also work better with WHD load, which since this is the only machine that really has enough RAM in it and a hard disk to try that out on, um, yeah, time to give that a go next. See you next time.